But it's Mike from Mike's and Mike's and Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at ways that you can actually improve the speed of your internet communications on your devices at home if you've perhaps maybe had some malware or you've changed network cards or possibly you've changed over your mesh system or basically your system just seems a little bit sluggish and unresponsive, especially when looking at your internal network. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at the ARP cache, what it does, how it does it and things to look out for and more importantly, how to erase it so you can start over and hopefully improve your internet speeds and intranet speeds. So let's go to the computer and get started. Okay, so this is our Windows 11 desktop, uh, which we'll be using today. Just so you know, so ARP is basically a cache which converts IP addresses to MAC addresses or MAC addresses to IP addresses. I'll be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure the exact way it works, but all I know is that it is a list or a cache of locations which Windows uses to identify where certain other computers are on your network. Now, because we live in a modern world where we have things like routers, modems, all that kind of stuff, which are in between us and the raw internet. Quite often, Windows uses the ARP cache as a way of knowing where your routers are and what to look for and how to kind of communicate with the outside world. Also, if you're using things like a NAS or some other internal network attached storage or network devices, maybe IP cameras, all of those will have their individual entries in the ARP cache. So let's have a look at the ARP cache first of all and see if we can take a look, see what it's like. What we're going to do is we're going to get a list and then we're going to clear it and then we're going to run it again and see what the differences are and see if there's anything on there that shouldn't necessarily be there. Again, potentially if you've had a virus at some point on your system, then it's always worth checking to see if there's any kind of rogue entries. So we'll start off, we're going to need the command prompt in the administrator level. Now I'm recording this on OBS, so you won't be seeing some of this, but if you just go to the bottom, type in command and in the best match section, command prompt or there, right click and choose run as administrator. When I do this, screen's gonna go blank. You'll get the user control thing, just click on okay. So there we go, there is our administrator command prompt. So the first thing we wanna do is to type in ARP minus A, space in between that, and then hit enter. So this is gonna give your network interface, which is connected to the outside world. And you'll see on the left-hand side, there's a bunch of internet addresses or IP addresses. Next to that, there's gonna be your physical addresses known as MAC addresses. And on the far side, we've got the type. So you have dynamic ones, which are ones which Windows will try and refresh all the time or recreate every time you boot. And you've got some at the bottom, which are gonna be known as static ones. So these are gonna be ones that Windows keeps storing for its own personal things, such as things like UPnP, those types of things. A lot of them are gonna be internal addresses. So the ones that you're going to probably see in there towards the bottom are going to be your internal addresses. So anything that starts with 224, that is an internal loopback, as is the 239 addresses and also 255. So at the bottom you'll probably find 255, 255, 255, 255. And that is essentially a loopback address. So that is absolutely fine. The ones you want to be more concerned about is if there's any really bizarre ones which you don't recognize, in which case probably a good idea, copy and paste them, throw them into Google, and just have a have a nose around and see what it comes up with. As with any of these, you can do that anyway. So if you, there's an address in there that you're not too sure of, like uh, 2240022, copy and paste it into Google and you can see exactly what it's all about. So the next thing we wanna do is to actually flush or erase our ARP cache entries. In order to do that, we need to type in the following, which will be listed in the video description. So it should look like this, net sh, Interface, you can actually type in int if you want to shorten interface. Uh, IP, then delete, then ARP cache. When you're happy, press enter. And you should get the okay message. Now what you can do for a quick sanity check, you can just type in ARP space minus A again, and you should find a dramatically reduced list. So any of the kind of rogue entries or unnecessary ones will have now been removed from the ARP cache. And in theory, after a system reboot, you may find that your internal intranet seems a little bit more snappy and potentially accessing the internet in general may feel better. And if you're experiencing possibly slightly laggy or slightly unresponsive web pages, it may also help with that. Something else you can do as well while we're at it, uh, we can do flush DNS just to make sure that our domain name entry systems, all that's gone as well. So we can do flush seems to be getting ahead of myself there. I didn't type in the prefix, so you do ipconfig, 
then a space, then a forward slash flush DNS. It's been a long day. There you go, and that has flushed the DNS resolver cache as well. So the combination of the two should find you with a, uh, a slightly more optimal settings for your system. Let me know, try it out, see if this works for you. Again, if you've come here because your system seems just a little bit less speedy than it normally would, then uh, let me know how you get on. Okay, so there you go. Hopefully this video is going to help you and uh, maybe your system will be a little bit more snappy, especially your internet browsing and all that kind of stuff. Let me know how you get on in the comments section below. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.